the government wants to be a key player in terms of global sustainability and has pledged to achieve carbon net zero by 2050. However, without a definitive roadmap in place for the decarbonisation of buildings, is the UK in danger of missing its targets? We're going to be looking at how the construction industry is addressing the net zero challenge and discuss the initiatives aimed at reducing whole life carbon. And perhaps our panel will be giving some new ideas to the incoming government about effective ways to decarbonise the industry. Um, my key highlights from today was uh, it was just really great to get loads of different um, conversations in the room and loads of from different parts of the industry. Um, I think it's really important that we have a holistic approach to sustainability and our drive to net zero. And I think having those different people all here in one place was really good for the conversation. So I think one of my key highlights would probably be the bigger picture around net zero buildings. And it was really encouraging to see a really diverse panel today, um, all agreeing on pretty much the, the right direction and the same thing. So there weren't any real controversies, which means we're, as an industry, ready to kind of gear towards actually delivering net zero buildings. And what we need is just a bigger plan and a bigger picture to actually make that all sing together and join up, um, and education and funding. I think building passports is probably, probably one of my key takeaways that we should all be shouting about to try and help that journey of those building owners through to net zero giving them options at the beginning at the feasibility stage i think is probably something that i'll take away i think my key highlights from today would probably be um, the fact that we all had an agreement that there was need for long-term planning from government um, in order to reach the decarbonisation goals and um, perhaps some of the agreement and disagreement around what that planning might look like but um, really that it needs to be sort of cross-party and we should try to not have it not have net zero being politicized as much as possible and sometimes we forget the consumer is actually who we're all working for and I think we kind of had a bit of a circular discussion but came back to the, the fundamentals if, if we make it right for the homeowner the building owner uh, then actually um, there are lots of opportunities in decarbonising, sector coupling uh, and the technology will grow to solve the problem. Um, most of the discussion today was not about the technology gap, it was about the knowledge gap, um, it was about the legislation um, gap uh, and I think the, the financial connection to make the right thing to do the easy thing to do and the fact that sustainability and f affordability don't have to be mutually exclusive. I think we had a really good wide ranging discussion. We covered all kinds of things ranging from plant rooms and how that works for heat networks and what the transition to off-gem regulating heat networks might mean for that part of the sector. But also I think we got some really good discussion around do you put fabric first in, the insulation question versus heating systems, and whether or not heat pumps can work in every building. And of course, heat pumps can work in every building, you just need to design them to do so. And we also talked, I thought it was good for me to be able to be here and talk about the role of flexibility and how you get that from, whether that's heat batteries, EVs, or from electric batteries and building that into the system so you don't have to spend more money than you need to on rebuilding the grid, which is what we're gonna spend the next 25 years doing. I think it's quite interesting because we all started by ranting and complaining about how little government is doing, but once we had that off our chest, um, there were so many actually exciting things happening. Uh, so initiatives not only at the building level, and, but from manufacturers, from the energy systems perspective. So that was quite encouraging actually. Uh, and. Everybody, most of the time, we talked about retrofit. We talked about the need to consider building and the grid together. So considering how we all came from very different backgrounds, I think that was quite positive. The fascinating thing about gatherings like this is that you learn what people you may not be coming across all the time are up to elsewhere within the built environment. So we can pick up on input that's coming from other professionals, other industry professionals, who are looking at perhaps the same problem, but maybe coming at it from a different angle. And you start to tease out where opportunities for improvement, either in policy or in financial development or in technical development, but actually it's much more about the process, the processes by which we are learning more about our built environment and learning why 
it's important to to carry out the various interventions we are and learning how to persuade the homeowners themselves of the value of these interventions and i think that education piece is a vital part of the equation educating the homeowner and then from our perspective we're also educating the workforce of the future who of course are also the homeowners of the future